Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka the Casino Mark at various places on the internet. It's 12.23 p.m. according to a computer clock on Tuesday, September 22nd, 2015. And this is my review of Original Sailor Moon Anime episode number 68 or episode number 22 of R or episode number 9 of Romance. Protect Chibiusa, Clash of the Ten Warriors. This episode originally aired in Japan on September 11, 1993. And, um, first of all, I just want to mention with a previous episode, episode 67, we've actually passed, uh, the third waypoint of the series in terms of episodes. Um, Due to the movies and specials, there's probably it's probably not at the third waypoint yet. But basically, it means that a third of the episodes are behind us. We've got two thirds left. Um, if you compared it to Lord of the Rings film trilogy, I guess you could say we're at the beginning of the Two Towers. I know that's largely meaningless, but whatever. Um, anyway, the pre-title scene. Usagi's having a dream that she and Mamoru have finally gotten married and they're in a church, there's a cross and everything and there's stained glass windows and um <laughs> there's a stained glass picture of a bunny by the altar yeah, stained glass bunny <laughs> oh boy anyway, people are popping champagne and you know, spraying him with champagne, and then Usagi wakes up, and she's like, I, I feel wet. <laughs> At first I thought, oh no, is Usagi having a wet dream? <laughs> but no, it's, uh, it turns out that supposedly it seems like she's wet the bed, and even Luna harps on her about it. Uh, she says, you're, uh, in the second year of middle school. Um, I don't know what grade that was that would be, but whatever. Um, anyway, it turns out Chibusa wet the bed, because Chibusa crawled into Usagi's bed, and somehow Usagi didn't notice her until this moment. But yeah, Chibusa wet the bed. <sighs> anyway, Wise Man makes a, his like second appearance, I think. Uh, he finally comes back after being gone for a while. Rubius is asking him for a report about what's happening in his time. And, you know, apparently the Black Moon Clan is taking over Crystal Tokyo. The Crystal Palace is surrounded, but it's being protected by the four guardians. And you briefly see, like, Mercury and Jupiter, I think. Uh, they're sending up beams or whatever to protect the Crystal Palace. Um, Rubius is like, there, there have been Sailor Guardians uh, interfering with us here in this century. I wonder if they're related to the Guardians in the future. You know, duh. I mean, they, they show us Mercury and uh, Jupiter in the future. Of course they're related. It's like... And on top of that, most Sailor Moon fans know all of this already, so to watch this and try to make it some kind of... Watching them try to make it some kind of big mystery for the audience, it's kind of embarrassing. But anyway, Shingo's being a dick because he... Usagi's trying to beat Chibi Usa's piss out of her bed sheets. Yeah, she's got her bed sheet on a clothesline or whatever outside. She's beating the... Beating the piss. <laughs> oh, uh, can he stick it in the laundry or something? Anyway, Shingo's accusing like, uh, Usagi of wetting her bed and stuff like that, and um, Chibusa runs away. Um, and Usagi yells at her, Luna! Gets on Usagi's case and says, you know, she's just a child. Uh, and you harp on her for wetting the bed, but she's expected to be able to do it. And Usagi brings up a good point. She points out that Luna harped on her when she thought that she did it. 
good point. But Luna's like, you need to go and apologize. You know, this is just like uh, the previous episode where Chibusa ran away and Luna, and Luna's like, you gotta go out and look for her. Just let the kid die. Anyway. Um, while Chibius is running away, there, she has a flashback to wetting the bed when she was really little. And the flashback is done in, like, pencil sketches or, or some crap. Um, but yeah, she wet the bed... And then her mom came to see what she did, and and her mom's like, it's shadow, you can't really see her face. And it's Usagi, obviously it's Usagi, but the series is trying to be all mysterious with this crap. <sighs> anyway, there's a flashback. She has a flashback to that episode where she caused gravity to cease functioning. And a warning from, you know, Sailor Pluto, or as she calls her Poo, which is a bit of an insult, but whatever. But so she tries. He want. She decides to try again to use her time key to go home, and she again almost goes through the portal, but she can't. So she whines and cries, and it sends out her power, or whatever, into the sky. The Black Moon Clan zero in on her. Um. She gets away from two of the sisters because one of them trips over Luna P. And then Chibusa runs over her on her way out and it's it's embarrassing. Also, the the sisters bicker over who spotted her first, who got there first, and after Chibusa runs away and they, they fall over or whatever, they quickly fix their faces with makeup before they take off after Chibiusa. Why are the bad guys behaving like stereotypical girls? Anyway. We also, uh, when Chibiusa takes refuge in like a construction site or something, Usagi comes up behind her. They're both sitting on opposite sides of a barrier so they can't see each other but Usagi knows she's there but Chibi Usa doesn't know Usagi's there. She uses Luna P to contact Sailor Pluto although she calls her Poo again and they talk for a while and we get a flashback to Crystal Tokyo where apparently Chibi Usa knows the Guardians in the future. You see them hanging out together although you don't I don't know if you see all of their faces clearly, but it is quite obviously them. So here's the question. If Chibusa knows the Guardians in the future, and she's with them outside of their Guardian uh, personas when they're not transformed, how does she not know that the girls are the Sailor Guardians in this century. How, how, how does she not put this together? They should have the same appearances when they're not transformed regardless of which century that they're in. And they have the same appearances when they are transformed anyway. They look the same. They're not animated any differently. <coughs> this is so stupid. Jeez. Anyway, Usagi gets some info. She hears about Crystal Tokyo. She hears that the Black Moon Clan are is responsible for doing something to Chibiusa's mother. So Usagi transforms. The Black Moon sisters show up. Rubius shows up. The other Senshi show up, and there's this big battle. Hence the term of the episode title of the episode, Protect Chibiusa, Clash of the Ten Warriors, the Ten Warriors being the Five Senshi, the Four Black Moon Sisters, and Rubius. Now, the fact that we have the words Protect Chibiusa in the title, I mean, it's not a good sign, but this, uh, this battle is actually done fairly well, and we get the best part 
um, I know Senshi, sung by Yoko Ishida. This is probably my favorite Sailor Moon song. At least one of my favorites. It's definitely up there. I have it on a mix CD in my car. That's how much that I love this song. It is such a badass fight song. You it makes you want to get up and fight alongside the Sailor Senshi. <sighs> listen to it outside of the uh, episode. J just listen to his song. It, it is so awesome. And you can get you know, a lyric translation for it at uh, AnimeLyrics.com Anyway, the girl's feet first meets Rubius. I believe he, he calls himself Crimson Rubius. Rubius has a bit of a broken line in the English dub when he says, you know, he's his plan basically, he's like, we're here to alter the future of this metropolis, but, uh, but the only way for us to do it, the rabbit must die. I think he forgot the word is in there. Um... Oh yeah, at one point Ruby says shut the hell up, which is pretty cool. Tuxedo Mask comes to a rescue. Uh, Usagi tries to use Moon Princess Halation on Rubius. He bamfs out there and he tells the girls to retreat for a time being. But he says, you know, he'll have his revenge and blah, blah, blah. So the episode ends with... Uh, with Chibiusa begging Sailor Moon to save her mom. Usagi's asking Chibiusa questions about what she heard. Chibiusa's not really giving any answers yet. So they're gonna drag this out a while longer. Uh, this is the end of the Blu-ray set, Season 2, Part 1. Uh, season 2, Part 2 comes out in October, I believe. But... Even though this is halfway through the season, it's not anywhere close to halfway through a story arc. Um, the story arc is like... Let me see how many episodes... Like 30 episodes long? So... We're not even a third of the way through the uh, the story arc of the of the Black Moon arc yet, so um, yeah, just because of that thirteen episode filler arc with the with the uh, tree, so yeah. As for what would have happened in the original timeline in this episode, absolutely nothing. Nothing would have happened at all. Maybe. Usagi would still have that dream that she and Mom Moru got married, maybe. Uh, but with you know changes in the timeline, you can't tell because you know dreams would be affected and stuff like that. Um, but basically, yeah, nothing happened in the original timeline. So um, yeah, and uh, now I gotta take a break, obviously, until I can do more reviews because I gotta wait for the next set to come out. So there's gonna be a bit of a break for a while. I'm gonna watch other stuff. Get caught up on other anime. Um, and that's it. It's 12.37pm and thanks for watching.